Hello there, this is Tobias Gilk, and today we're going to be taking a look at some brand new information that was recently released by GE Healthcare. It is their magnetic spatial gradient tables. Uh, magnetic spatial gradient is the measurement of how steep or shallow a magnetic field is, and this is pertaining to their MRI scanners. MSG information is terribly important because many medical implants and devices have MR conditional ratings, which means they can be used safely in the MR environment if the magnetic environment does not exceed the tested conditions. This is why it's very important to be able to understand the magnetic spatial gradient characteristics of GE MRI scanners, and they've just released this information. So if you do not currently have you should request this document, the updated MRI safety guide. The updated version of this document includes magnetic field information, the maximum field, the B field, the spatial gradient maximums, the um, force product maximums, and has just recently been appended to include spatial gradient cylinder information. Now many people have gotten this but are scratching their heads as to how to actually put it into effective use. And unfortunately the document is not exactly the most user-friendly um, explanatory piece that there is. Uh, the best way that I have found to understand this document is to start out with a real test case. So in this case we're going to use a 3 Tesla HDX magnet and in the front half of this PDF document you can identify each and every one of GE's magnet types. So in this particular instance we have cropped out the 3T HDX. Now the interesting thing to note is that the magnet, the MRI system is a 3T HDX but that is not what the magnet is called. If we take a close look in the table here we call it the 3T HDX for the system. GE calls that magnet the G3 magnet. So, essential thing to know as we're going through these tables is that in GE speak, 3 Tesla HDX equals G3. We'll come back to that in just a second. Okay, so as we go further into the document, we get towards the latter part of the document, we get into these salad bar of number tables uh, that include all kinds of different information. First thing, take a deep breath. What we need to find out before we do anything else is we need to find our magnet. And again, this is clipped out, so the actual document has much more information, but we zoom in on our particular magnet type, the G3. Now, the other critical thing to identify on this table is the top row on patient Z axis, on 20 centimeter diameter cylinder surface, on a 30 centimeter diameter cylinder surface, on a 40 centimeter diameter cylinder surface. Where are all of these cylinders that this table is referring to? Well, the cylinders are imaginary. Now, imagine yourself looking straight down the center of the bore, and we are going to superimpose this kind of bullseye concentric ring for uh, the magnetic field. So there is the z-axis, which is the dot in the center of our bullseye that runs right down the length of the bore. And then as we move out, set distance away from that central z-axis, um, we get these rings, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, 50 centimeters in increasing diameter. Now if we imagine that those rings are not just rings, but they're extruded cylinders, Ah, this is where the cylinders come from. So, we don't really care what the patient is exposed to. The patient has been prescribed an MRI. So presumably, we're not really concerned about the magnetic field acting on the, the biological of the patient. What we're concerned about is the magnetic field acting on MR conditional implants and devices. So the first thing we need to do is we need to kind of figure out, well, where is this implant or device within the patient? And then, once we have an idea of the cross-sectional anatomy of the patient, where does that anatomy fall within these concentric bullseye rings? 
is the anatomy within the 20 centimeter ring, the 30 centimeter ring, the 40 centimeter ring? This is important, as you will see in just a second. We're jumping back to the table now. Um, now, as I said, this is a salad bar of numbers. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the magnets that aren't, aren't ours. We're going to look exclusively at the G3 magnet. The next thing is we're going to get rid of the B sub zero information and the force product information, which are the rows above and below the shaded middle one. All we're going to concentrate on is that middle shaded row that starts out identified as gradient, Tesla per meter. All right, so when we are looking at our body, let's start in the very center, that center green dot right there. That is the z-axis. What is the maximum magnetic spatial gradient along that z-axis? Let's jump back into our table again. Well, it's 5 tesla per meter, and the conversion from tesla per meter to gauss per centimeter, and most MR conditional implants give their spatial gradient tolerance in gauss per centimeter. To make that conversion, all you need to do is move the decimal point two spots to the right. So, directly on that z-axis, at any point along the length of that line, the maximum magnetic spatial gradient that will ever occur on that line is 5 tesla per meter or 500 gauss per centimeter. Now, along the line is not terribly helpful because we can't be assured that whatever the implant is is small enough to fit on that line or you know, not going to fall outside of it. So what we we're really concerned with are volumes. So the volumes based on the cylinder diameter. So our 20 centimeter cylinder diameter has a maximum potential magnetic spatial gradient of 5.2 tesla per meter, which is 520 gauss per centimeter. The 30 centimeter diameter, 5.5 tesla per meter, equals 550 gauss per centimeter. The 40 centimeter, 6 tesla per meter, 600 gauss per centimeter. Now you notice all of these guys have little asterisks behind them, or asterisks. Um, that's because they are all less than the infamous 720 gauss per centimeter, which is a very frequently occurring test threshold for MR conditional implants, again, for spatial gradient. So what this is saying is on this 3 Tesla HDX magnet, which GE calls the G3, if we are within 40 centimeters uh, well, 20 centimeters radius from, from the z-axis, but it, if we have a 40 centimeter cylinder centered on that z-axis, anything within that volume cannot exceed a 720 gauss per centimeter, uh, 720 gauss per centimeter spatial gradient. Now, that magnet happens to be wider. The bore diameter is greater than 40 centimeters. So, Where's the rest of the data? Well, unfortunately, they make you jump to a different page. You have to go to page 16, where they have a whole nother chart. Um, and they actually start off by, once again, giving you the z-axis right on the axis value, which we had in the previous one. That's 500 gauss per centimeters. And then they pick up, again, on the 10 centimeter incre increment. And at 50 centimeter diameter, 25 centimeter radius, the spatial gradient is 670 gauss per centimeter. And then they do a strange thing and they give us 55 centimeters at 770 gauss per centimeter. And at the 60 centimeter diameter cylinder, it's 790 gauss per centimeter. And lastly, at 70 centimeters, which is the wall of the bore of the magnet. This is a 70 centimeter diameter magnet. Um, the spatial gradient is 1,000 and 40 gauss per centimeter. Now only two of these guys on this list have the asterisks, which indicates that they are also below the infamous 720 gauss per centimeter. So what this tells us is the safe zone, the safe cylindrical volume um, within the 3T HDX magnet, and when I'm saying safe I mean at or below the 720 gauss per centimeter threshold. There are other safety considerations. This is only looking at the spatial gradient aspect of that. 
but within that 50 centimeter diameter volume, any anatomy that falls within there and the implant or device within that anatomy cannot exceed 720 gauss per centimeter. So let's go back to our Phillips bullseye diagram looking down the, um, the magnet. Um, now one thing we need to correct from the Phillips diagram to the GE world is this particular diagram is based on a 60 centimeter magnet and again our 3T HDX is a 70 centimeter so we actually we need to kind of drop in a couple more markers and identify the 60 and the centimeter excuse me the 60 and 70 centimeter thresholds there now let's look at what the values are at each one of these rings 500 gauss per centimeter on that line that is the z-axis in the center 520 at 20 centimeters diameter 550 at 30 centimeters diameter 600 at 40 centimeters diameter 670 at 50 centimeters diameter we're going to stop here for just a second remember we're looking frequently for what's less than 720 so everything between the z-axis and the 50 centimeter diameter ring all of that volume is safe with respect to the 720 gauss per centimeter now the 60 centimeter ring which is the last ring before we hit the bore wall is 790 and the bore wall itself can experience spatial gradients of up to 1040 gauss per centimeter so another way of looking at this is that if we are 10 centimeters away from the bore wall either side any direction top bottom left right if we are 10 centimeters away from the bore wall we are in the cylindrical volume where the magnetic spatial gradient cannot get higher than 670 so 10 centimeters away from the bore wall on this particular magnet again the GE HDX3 Tesla magnet uh, we will not exceed the 720 gauss per centimeter so with that, just uh, some lawyerly stuff in closing. Um, I do not assert any copyright on the GE or Philips um, materials. I'm using this under the fair use, and the copyright of this presentation is limited to my components within it. Now, if you have any questions, I do invite you to contact me directly. Thank you very much, and I hope that this has been helpful to you.